In this video, we're going to be talking about the concepts of variance and standard deviation, which are the most commonly me used measures of variability. Now, if you recall, in an earlier video, we looked at the idea of a range, which is a very crude measure of variability, and we want to um, come up with something that's a little more sophisticated that takes into every data value. And if you remember, then the development of the mean absolute deviation, we got to the point where we wanted to turn the deviations into positives. And we said there were two methods. One was take absolute value and one was square it. The absolute value way led to the mean absolute deviation and the other way is squaring. And this is going to lead to variance and standard deviation. Now, we prefer squaring rather than absolute value. And the reason is basically this. If you think back to absolute value, it's actually defined as a piecewise defined function. It's the absolute value of x is x if x is positive or zero, but it's the opposite of x if x is a negative number. And so what that does is it gives us a two-pronged thing. It's really easy to do to find the absolute value of a number, right? If it's got a negative, you just get rid of it. Uh, otherwise, you just leave it alone. But uh, it, it runs into some problems when you're doing things like algebra and calculus with it because you've got this, this piecewise thing to deal with. So it makes it a little bit harder to work with. And whereas squaring is, uh, is, is an algebraic function, very easy to, to work with. And so it's easier to do things like algebra and calculus with it. And um, it also makes things a little bit more, more uh, sensitive uh, in the measure to extreme uh, things that are way out away from the mean, which we kind of like that as well too. So, so this, uh, this for that reason, we prefer variance and standard deviation over mean absolute deviation. So let's return to this data set. Now, this is a data set we were looking at in the mean absolute deviation video in the last video, and this is the data set in purple right here: 4, 5, 8, 10, 11, 12, 14, 14, 15, and 27. And I've put them in increasing order, and I've I've engineered this so that, that that's pretty nice numbers. First of all, there are 10 of them. The sum is a is a multiple of 10, 120. So when we divide out and get the mean, we get a nice nice natural number, 12 very contrived data set and we then take the so then the deviations we when we do 4 minus 12 is negative 8 5 minus 12 is negative 7 and so forth I'll do a couple others 12 minus 12 is 0 15 minus 12 is 3 and so forth and we get the differences from the mean which in this case are all integers and it turns out if you add these differences to the mean you always get 0 and so that doesn't work as a measure of uh, variability so we need to consider make these things positive so in mean absolute deviation what we did is we took the absolute value of all these what we're going to do now is we're going to take these deviations x sub k minus x bar and instead of taking the absolute value we're going to square them so we're going to square all these numbers so the first number right in this next column would be uh, positive 64 and then down here 3 squared is 9 Okay, so what I want you to do is, is go ahead and square all these numbers, which will be the x sub k's minus the x bar squares, and then I want you to add them all up and then average them out. Okay, so which would be add them up and divide by uh, n, which is 10. And so we're going to consider this as being an entire population. So if, if so, this is, what, this is the formula for a population variance. So you take each x sub k, that's the purple ones here. You're going to subtract the mean. First of all, you got to find the mean, which is 12. Then you do the xk minus the mean. So we take each one of these, subtract 12. That gives us all these numbers in this column right here. Then we're going to square each one of those numbers. That will give us the numbers in this column. Then we're going to add them all up. That will give you the number in that box right there. And then we're going to divide by the sample size, divide by, or the population size, excuse me, uh, divide by 10, which will give you the number right there, and that is the population variance. And we use the symbol for it, lowercase sigma squared for the population variance. So see if you can go ahead and finish filling out this table and find the population variance for this population. When you get done, come back. Press pause now. 
Well, here we go. Negative 8 squared is 64. Negative 7 squared is 49. Negative 4 squared is 16. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 2 squared is 4. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. And 15 squared is 225. 64 plus 49 plus 16, in other words, add all the, plus all the way down to 225, add all these together, you get 376. That's the numerator. Divide by 10, you get 37.6, and that is the population variance. Now, one problem with the uh, population variance is the units are wrong. Uh, I didn't put units on this, but let's say... Oh, let's say these are measured in meters, 4 meters, 5 meters, 8 meters, and so forth. Then these differences, the, then the mean is also measured in meters, 12 meters. The differences from the mean, these are all meters, 8 meters below the mean, eight, 7 meters below the mean, 2 meters above the mean, 3 meters above the mean. But when we square them, now these are in square meters, and the sum is in square meters. When we divide by 10, we still get a, a square meter for this. It's the wrong unit for a variance. Well, it's the right unit for a variance, but it's the wrong unit really for variability. So what we want to do now is if we just turn around and take the square root of that, we get what's called the population standard deviation, which we use the Greek letter sigma, the lowercase Greek letter. Okay, and so sigma then is just the square root of sigma square. Makes sense, right? It's the square root of the variance, and so this would be uh, the square root of that formula that we just computed. Okay, so in this back in this last case, it would be the square root of 37.6, which is six point something. Okay. Now, going to get into a little bit of a technical thing. Most of the time, we do not have feasible access to the full population data. So most of the time, we, we do not have access or enough information to compute the population parameter, like the population standard deviation, for example, or the population mean. So instead, what we do is we take a sample and we find the corresponding statistic for that sample, and we use it to estimate the population parameter. For example, the sample mean, let's say, well, let's say we're going to measure, say, all heights of all people in the United States, and we will find the average. Let's say all adults, females in the United States. Well, that's too many people to measure. We just can't do it. Okay. So what we, what we might do, though, is to take some sort of representative sample, find their heights, and find the average there, the sample mean. And we would say, well, that's, a, that's an estimate of the mean of the true population mean, which is a parameter. Okay, And it turns out that the sample mean is the best estimate of the population mean. So on average, the, if, you, if you did a sample mean of one sample, you're going to get some, a sample mean. You do a sample mean for another sample, you get another sample mean. And then another sample, another sample, another sample. You get a whole bunch of sample means. Well, if you average all those means, the mean of the means, then it should be pretty close to the mean of the population. And so that means that the sample mean does not routinely or systematically underestimate or overestimate the population mean. So the sample mean is what we call an unbiased estimator of the population mean. So it's, it's what we want it to be. But when we get to variability, something strange happens here. Samples tend to be less variable than the population. So if we use the formula that we had a while ago, in other words, if we go back here and use this formula for a sample, use x bar for mu, use little n for n, and use this, it turns out that that sample would, in fact, uh, actually underestimate the actual population uh, standard deviation. So what happens is if we use that formula, we get a number that's too small. We need to make it a little bigger. Well, one way we can make a number a little bit bigger that's got a fraction is to make the denominator a little bit smaller. Think about it. One-fifth, if you make the denominator a little smaller, one-fourth, you've actually got a bigger 
a bigger fraction. Okay, so it turns out that if we can just take that denominator and decrease it by just one, subtract one from it, it'll increase the overall value of the measure. And it turns out, I won't go into the technical details to show you this, but it turns out that that's just enough to make the sample variance an unbiased estimator of the population variance. So if you did this over and over and over again, it would not routinely under or overestimate the population variance. Okay, and so we would, uh, it works out to be what we would like to have happen. So, when we do a sample variance, we do, we use S square instead of sigma square. Oftentimes, when we have a population parameter, we use a Greek letter like mu for the population mean, whereas we use a, a Roman letter X bar for the sample mean. Here we use, similarly, we use sigma for a population uh, standard deviation and S for pop sample standard deviation. And of course, then S square is the sample variance and sigma square is the sample variance for a population. So S square is a sample, uh, S square is the population variance. S, sig let me say it again, make sure I say it right. Sigma square is a population variance. S square is a sample variance. Okay, so anyway, it's the same formula that you had before, except instead of mu, we don't know this population mean, we have x bar, which is a sample mean, and we have little n, which is our sample size, but instead of dividing by n, you divide by n minus 1, and that's the sample variance. And then, of course, take the square root of that, and that is the sample standard deviation. So what do we do? We take x, x's minus x bars, the data values minus the sample mean, we find those differences, we square them, we add them up, we divide by n minus 1, and then we take the square root to find the sample standard deviation. Now, we will assume in anything in my class that it is a sample rather than a population unless there's something that really tells you that that is a full population. So we will almost always be using this formula for S rather than this formula for sigma. Okay, so what if we say treat this as a sample rather than a population, compute the sample variance and standard deviation. I've already got the deviation squared from earlier and the sum, so you should be able to fi finish this one out quickly. Press pause now. Well, there's the sample variance is S square which is this, you take the deviations, xk minus x bar, square them. Okay, so the x's are, are the purple ones. The x minus the x bar, well, the x bar is 12. The x minus the x bars are this column. The squares of those things are this column. And then add them up. Now we have the numerator of 376. And this time we divide by n minus 1, so we're dividing by 9, which is 41.7 repeating. This Then just take the square root of that, and now we have the, uh, the sample standard deviation. Notice that both samples in the uh, situation below in, this, in these uh, frequency histogram, or uh, I guess relative frequency histogram, have a mean of 10, but the standard deviation is lower on the right Standard deviation is lower on the left and higher on the right. 